everyone, how's it going? I just wanna show you this lens and talk real quickly about how I didn't really have to pay for this out of the pocket. I bought this lens based on the funds that came in from my Etsy shop last year. And in this video, I wanna help you start to do the same thing. Here's something really important I wanna say is this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not one of those like make $10,000 a month on Etsy and quit your day job and go and sell prints online. None of that, like that's possible. And I've you know seen people do that kind of stuff. This is more about somebody like me, somebody like you who has 10,000, 20, 40, 50, 100,000 images sitting on their computer and they're asking themselves, well, what can I do with this? One of the things you could do is sell your stuff on Etsy. And that's what this is about. Using your images that you already have, putting them someplace that people could actually buy them from and then using those funds to buy a lens, maybe buy a new camera, uh, pay, for, <laughs> pay for gas, which is really important right now. All these things are possible, especially if you set your expectations to the point where you can make maybe a thousand, a couple thousand dollars a year selling your prints and with minimum effort. Let's real quickly take a look at my stats from last year so I can show you what I'm talking about. This is how I got my 33 1.4, one of my favorite new Fuji lenses. Uh, this is the last year's sales on Etsy and I got this with only 30 orders. So you can see my revenue was $2,021. And uh, I got this from 9,000 views and 4,500 visits. And that's not too bad, right? If you look at those orders, I only sold 30 things, but I got $2,000. And I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating when I say I put 10 to 20 minutes a month on Etsy. And some months, like zero minutes. <laughs> no joke. I don't think I ever probably spent more than 30 minutes a month on Etsy. So to be able to put that aside and get that money and kind of put it in my bank account under my Etsy money and then buy a lens. It's pretty rewarding and pretty cool and something that's very, very possible. Like I said before, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is something that I did and therefore you can do. So this is possible. I'm gonna assume that you've already set up your store. If you haven't done that, you can go do that now or you can take a couple of notes, whatever you wanna do. But I'm gonna go through a list of things that I recommend that new Etsy shop owners think about or start doing and I hope you do the same thing. So the first thing to think about is who is your audience? And when I say that, this is like basically marketing kind of 101. Think about a person sitting at a desk or sitting on their cell phone, also very likely, and they're typing something in to the search engine on Etsy to find something to purchase. One of the cool things about Etsy is that people go there to buy stuff, right? They, they're like, I wanna buy something for this person or for myself or for a room in the house. And I'm gonna go to Etsy and see what I can find that's unique that I can't find at Target, someplace else. And I'm gonna type something in. Who is that person for you, right? Is it a man or is it a woman? What age are they? Think about all those different things that that person might be. So then when you're creating your shop, when you're creating your appearance and your listings and the language you're using, you're speaking to that person. That is important. And that's something that I'm still getting used to and still trying to define as I go. I see that most of the most successful shops on Etsy seem to have a very, very strict idea of who they're selling to. And so their language, the way everything looks, it's basically selling to that person. So that's a really good thing to think about is who is your audience? What are you trying to, who are you trying to reach exactly? And be thinking about that person when you're creating everything that you're gonna do in your shop. Another thing to do is research the competition. Don't copy them. Copying does not help anyone. It doesn't help them. It definitely does not help you. You're gonna be a shadow of their store if you're just copying somebody else. You have to be your own person, your own photography. But doing some research will help you start to get used to Etsy. So when you start searching for some of the items that you want to maybe also sell, some of the, the ideas for photos that you wanna put out there, see what kind of shops come up. And what you'll be looking for a little bit is you'll be looking at, for instance, their reviews and you'll be looking for how many sales they have. And then from there, extrapolating what kind of items are popular in that shop. All right, so this is my shop. This is how it looks right now. I just changed my shop appearance. I'm trying to reach like a person that's maybe trying to put some items into a farmhouse, like a modern farmhouse type environment. Uh, so I've changed things up a little bit to kind of maybe reflect that just a touch. And when you scroll down, you'll see everything I'm selling, my featured items, all the stuff in my store. You'll see I have 89 total sales and admirers. Those are my shop sections. 
Um, none of this stuff totally tells us too much. Just because someone has a bunch or a little amount of items in their shop doesn't necessarily indicate, I think, by them by itself that much. Um, just as a quick side note, I know that through research, most of the su successful shops have many, many items, hundreds, sometimes like seven, 800 items on their shops, although that's not totally necessary for everyone. But if you look down and you keep scrolling, you'll see my reviews. And reviews are really important because those are the people that took the time to sit down after they bought something and actually put you know, a review in. And it's also a way that you could see what's selling and how that person maybe is selling. And for me, looking at my stats and looking at something like this, I'm selling to people who are looking for location specific stuff. So here's something from Kansas. And when I start looking at the rest of my listings, a Nebraska sky, Nebraska, Nebraska, and that one's just an odd one. Uh, but again, Nebraska, uh, Nebraska landscape, uh, Nebraska again. So awesome Nebraska house canvas. You can see that my theme, what I'm selling, what people are buying from me is Nebraska themed stuff. And if you apply this concept and you're looking at what other people are doing, you'll see that uh, some trends like that. Do so you see what's selling on their shops? So you can start to get an idea of how to sell what you have. So for instance, there's this one Etsy store that I look at and I really enjoy her work. She sells a ton of bathroom art. So her entire shop is not based on locations. Her entire shop is based on people who are sitting at a computer searching for items to put in their bathroom or their kitchen or their bedroom. And she's specifically making listings to reach that person. While my shop historically has been to try to reach people who are looking for Nebraska or Kansas or something like that. So after you've done a little bit of research and thought about your audience, you might want to think about putting your appearance together. So we already looked at that a little bit, but I'll go here. This is the behind the scenes, the shop manager. If we go here to sales channels, and I click on my shop. This is where we could change the appearance of a shop. So I can actually edit my shop. I can change my banner up here. I could change my little profile or um, my shop icon right here. And I could also choose what items I want to put in my featured items. Before we move on, a really great resource is Canva. And if you go to Canva, C-A-N-V-A, -A, most of what Canva offers is free, which is amazing. And it allows you to create stuff like I did up here on my, on my shop icon. So, uh, or on my shop, my storefront. So if you go to Canva, you could actually go to create a design and you could just search for Etsy shop cover and click on that. And then right there, you have that shop cover already ready to go. From there, you can go to elements, for instance, and you can look for frame and frame mock-up bedroom. I can drag this over here and I can put a frame right there. This is uh, something that's pretty easy to do. And then I could take a couple of my uploads and let's say I'll put that boot in here, move that around. And then if I was gonna take more time, I could fit that exactly into that frame. I could zoom in and all that stuff. You could take the time to go do that yourself but that's basically a really easy way to be able to make these kind of high quality banners um, that you see on my Etsy shop right there and to be able to go and edit them. So if you look at my things that I already have set up, I actually have a whole bunch of stuff set up and if I click on it, this is like a shop listing, I can just drag stuff right there and it's really easy because of Canva and then I can just click share and download. So that's a really quick and easy way that you could actually create graphics without spending time in Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator or anything else like that. The point is, is to get in there and make something, imagining your audience looking at your shop. Are they gonna have what kind of a feeling when they see it? And so hopefully somebody who's looking at my shop is gonna be like, oh, okay, so they have a house that's kind of minimal like me, right? Some, some white beige walls and all that. And they have country landscape photography, rustic, rural, farmhouse type stuff that I might want to buy to put in my house because this person is speaking directly to me. Hopefully that's the point I'm getting at. Now, am I succeeding? I mean, medium, but I know that my shop is not selling nearly as much as I would like it to. So I still have work to do and I'll get there and also keep sharing my journey in Etsy as time goes on. So I'll be updating this series um, throughout the months. Another thing to set up is your shop policies. And for instance, like do you accept returns? To go to there, we're gonna go back we're gonna go into settings and then policy settings. And we're already here. So 
Um, my shop policy is fairly simple. If something's not right, tell me and I'll make it right. And I've done that before. Uh, do you accept exchanges, returns, contact me within a certain amount of time? These are things that you could fall back on if somebody has some kind of an issue or problem with your stuff. Throughout my 90 sales or so on Etsy, I've only maybe encountered two problems and I've gotten both figured out really quickly, really easily and without any kind of negative reviews. Um, and part of it is due to my clear shop expectations. So when somebody wants to exchange something or return something, um, we can refer to these policies. But generally, like if I if somebody has a problem with something, I just do whatever I can to make it right as long as I'm not out hundreds of dollars. So now that you've got your policies taken care of and you have an appearance for your shop that's speaking to the person that you're looking at selling stuff to, we need to actually create some listings. And at first, creating list listings can be an absolute time suck. And I will admit that upfront, it takes a little bit of time, but I'm gonna show you a couple tips on how you can do it a little bit quicker after we go through some of the important things about listings on Etsy. So I'm gonna go over here to my listings and you'll see a screen that looks like here. I have all my listings here. I can go and edit them. I can make them a favorite so it shows up in my favorite spots and all that stuff. But basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna click add a listing and this is for when you first do it. When we add a listing, you can put your photos in there. So um, I, I recommend, and most people recommend, that you not put it, only put a photo of the object or the print that you're selling, but you also put mock-ups in there if you're selling Darby. Um, or like if you're gonna put your Darby on a coffee mug, show the coffee mug in an environment that's pleasing and that's directed towards your audience. Etsy, a newer thing is they have videos. So if you have a video of your product, in some way, I just have like a video, a slideshow of some of my images that I put in there. People, according to Etsy, they're loving the listing video. So consider that. Although for the most of my listings, most of the money that I made last year, um, it was hit or miss of whether the, you know, the listing had a video or not. Titles are very important. So we're going to click right here on title. And titles are um, something that, of course, the people see first. They see your picture, your, you know, your thumbnail, and then they see your title. Now, one of the things that I'm going to recommend that you do is you go to the Etsy seller handbook and you read the whole thing. The Etsy seller handbook is really good information to get you started on Etsy. You have to remember, Etsy wants you to sell things. They make money when you sell stuff, right? So they want you to sell hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stuff if possible, right? They just they want to help you. And that Etsy seller handbook, they really do tell you and tell me, tell everybody, what the best practices are for you to get in there and actually start selling. One of the things that they're saying is to put some keywords and keywords are important to remember because keywords is the way that you're telling Etsy what you're selling. So then they could serve that up to people who are searching for what you are putting out there. So your title should include some keywords. If you do some research on Etsy, you'll see some people just listing a whole bunch of keywords in their titles and Etsy's, trying to tell people not to do that. They're saying to put some keywords into the title so people know what your stuff is, but but create your listing for a human, not a computer. So instead of just saying landscape photo, wall art, uh, Nebraska, and just a list of keywords, say Nebraska landscape photo for bathrooms or something like that, um, which is kind of weird. I don't know if I put a Nebraska landscape photo in my bathroom, but you get the gist. As the title, it has some keywords in there, but it also speaks really quickly to an audience member who's sitting down and they're looking at your shop. Who made it? You put, you know, you did. What is it? A finished product. You're selling something that you're going to print. Um, so it's a finished product that you've already edited and all that stuff. Um, when did you make it? And I just put made order. Unless you have prints that you already have a big stack of and you can, up to you, put what date you actually made those prints. The category, you could go ahead and put in photography, for instance. So if we put in photography, um, digital prints, wall decor, black and white photography, there's different options you could press. Those all help people understand what your item is and serves it up to them. Uh, your renewal options, it'll list every time it expires for 20 cents. It's not super expensive. And then your description is fairly important as well. Just recently, Etsy made an update to their SEO. And description actually matters a little bit now. So the first couple lines of your description should have some keywords. And again, you're not talking to a computer. You're talking to an audience. But 
put in your important keywords. So if I'm going after Nebraska, people who are looking for Nebraska gifts or put, to put Nebraska items in their house, I'll make sure to incorporate Nebraska into the title or into the description, I'm sorry. Um, and then I usually put in a bunch of other information. If we go to, let's go to my listings and check it out real quick. I put my paper options in there and I explain what they are. Um, I make sure to tell people that framing is not included because even though my mock-ups have frames in them, I'm trying to show people sometimes what they would look like in a frame. I don't generally include framing in my options. Some people do, some people don't. Um, I tell people to look, zoom into the art to make sure that it's going to look good so they're not surprised by how something looks. And a little bit about me, about my shipping. And I put in there an art skew so I know what file that is so I could easily and quickly uh, find it. After that, I, if you are using somebody else, like a production partner, so for instance, if you're using drop shipping, so that drop shipping is if somebody orders something from you and you send a file to like Printful as one of the drop shippers, Printful will send it to the person. Or for instance, for me, most of my prints, I use a local printer that I work with in town. And so I work with him to get really amazing quality prints. And I'll just make sure I check that I'm using a local professional printer. And the section, you can put your shop into sections. So if you're reaching somebody who's looking for different items in their house, like ba bathroom, kitchen, you know, whatever, living room, kids room, you might put that kind of stuff in there. Or if you're going with different categories, like I am right now, I have landscape, car and truck, roll barns and buildings. I'll probably be changing this soon to go more with like rooms of people's houses. But for right now, that's how I have mine set up. And according to the seller handbook, this actually helps people to find your stuff as well. The tags are extremely important. The tags are Etsy's main way of telling people what your stuff is. It's important to, when you're doing your research, to kind of understand what tags, how you can find out what tags are. So if we go to Etsy and we click on an item, I'll just click on this one, and we scroll down, you can see their title has some keywords. And if we scroll down to the very bottom, right here in this section, those are their tags. So you can kind of see what other people are using. So this person is using large canvas, Western decor, barn photo print. See how they're changing their words up a little bit um, to try to reach that audience that are looking for those items. So that is the best way that you could get people to know what your stuff is. Your tags, you only have like 20 characters, I think, per tag. And you don't want to always, according to the seller handbook, repeat your words over and over again. So um, uh, it's not good to just put in wall decor five or six times. You could put wall decor in there one time and then maybe home wall art on another one. And then Etsy will combine some of those search terms. So if one of mine is Nebraska wall art and then another one is landscape photography, if somebody is looking for Nebraska landscape photography, both of those items have a chance to be seen. And remember, if you're just doing this to one item, it's hard in the sea of millions of items that are on Etsy to be found and that's why a lot of people say that you should have hundreds of items in your store not all on the same keyword but you know a little bit of a variety so then your stuff has a chance to be found a little bit more than just somebody who has a few items or maybe they're using only the same keywords over and over again so use your tags per item make them exactly what they are and get them in front of people you have to remember that if your tags are deceptive if you're trying to just rip off somebody else's tags because you see it selling well and Etsy notices that people are looking at your stuff, but they're not buying or they're not clicking. That means that you're using the wrong tags. Your stuff should speak specifically to that item, that specific item that you're trying to sell. Materials also show up in the Etsy algorithm. Make sure to put any kind of materials. So for instance, textured paper, canvas, those kind of things. Price is tough. <laughs> price is the big one. I, I'm not going to go over price a lot. I've tried different price points, and I think the, the entire thing is I've seen people be successful selling stuff for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, and they're selling a very small amount, but they're making a decent amount of money because their prices are higher. And I've also seen people sell literally thousands and thousands of items at a lower price point, and that person's probably a little bit busier trying to get stuff shipped out the door than the person selling fewer items. So it's up to you on what you want to do. Uh, just remember that racing to the bottom is not a great way to compete. The $2,000 that I made off of Etsy last year was on 30 orders, which if you really think about that, 
not hard to fulfill, right? That's where the 10 to 20, 30 minutes a month that I spent on Etsy, that's where it came from is when somebody bought stuff, I just go ahead, I went ahead and ordered the print to be sent to them. And that was most of my work. But I was at a little bit of a higher price point, not super high at all, but just a touch little, uh, a little bit higher than other people. So that is probably one of the reasons I only sold 30 prints on Etsy last year. Um, but that's up to you. Um, we usually keep quantity at one. If something sells, I renew it for 20 cents. And then the variations exist. If you click on variations, you can actually uh, make a variation for different sizes and different papers and all that stuff. I'll show you, for instance, over here, um, my variations are uh, the size right here. So five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14, and then by paper type. So luster, textured, and then canvas. Um, and you can see my prices range from, oh, geez, uh, $23 for a five by seven to 600 and something dollars for a, a canvas that's 48 by 72, and you can make those things. So let's see, what else is there? Oh, and then your shipping. Uh, some people do free shipping. Some people do a little bit. I My shipping usually costs me about $10, $12 per item to ship, and I kind of split that in half with the people. So mine's $5 pretty much no matter what. Uh, I just want to keep things simple with shipping. That's, that's just me. As a cheat, as a way that you can do all this, without having to do it all every single time is this. So when you're in your shop and you create your first listing and you have it the way that you really, really want it to be, save it as a draft. And your draft then can be your future template. So I have this draft here and I have 2022 and I'm gonna click on here and go to copy. Now my copy is already re ready. So the video's in there. Some of the thumbnails showing the different sizes are in there. I could just throw new thumbnails in there. Um, and then I can create a new title. I can put in primary and secondary colors if I want to. Um, and then I'm going to go into the listing uh, and create a new beginning to the listing because most of my items are going to have the same stuff later on. And everything else, the, the types of papers I offer is, uh, it's already input. And then I just have to put in the tags, the listing, and the prices are going to stay the same for 99% of my items. So that's a quicker way to get in there and to be able to easily make your listings without having to start from scratch every single time. So now that you have your Etsy store up, you have a specific person that's shopping for your items, you're speaking to them, you have mock-ups that look like what they're looking for, you have all that stuff going and you have some items in your store, the thing that you need to do is start to tweak things a little bit and start to pay attention to some of the things that you should pay attention to. So for instance, for me, I go into my Etsy store quite often and I'll just check out my stats. Um, and so for instance, for last year, if we look at those again, my conversion rate is pretty low. Conversion rate is just for how many people are looking at the item and, and kind of clicking on it versus how many people buy. So 0 0.7 is not great. I would like to be at like 2% is a pretty good number from what I've heard. If I could get there, I'd probably double or triple the amount of stuff that I was selling. Now remember, I'm only putting 10 to 20 minutes a month into this. And for me to put that minimum amount of time, I'm okay and I'm happy with the amount of money that I'm making on Etsy. I, it, would, it would stand a reason that if I put double, triple, quadruple the amount of time into my Etsy store, I would probably get much better results. And how I would do that is I would pay really close attention to my statistics and I would try to figure out how people are finding my shop in the first place and then how to expand it beyond that. So we already said earlier, my shop is found for Nebraska items and that's been true beyond a doubt. So if I go down to search, my, my items that are selling more than anything else are all Nebraska items. And if I wanted to expand that reach, I could say, all right, well, I wanna maybe start selling stuff from Iowa or Kansas or South Dakota you know, Wyoming, Colorado, some of the places that near me that I, I go to travel to that I have photos for and start putting maybe 20, 30, 50 items from each of those places out there on Etsy and keywording those appropriately. And that's going to expand my reach. It would also stand a reason that if I was going to be a little bit smarter about Etsy, I would probably think more about because the amount of people who are looking for Nebraska items is probably pretty small. Um, you could actually go in and find keywords. There are some, if you just search for um, something like marmalade, marma, marmalade, 
Um, it's it's a way that you can go in and find what shoppers are looking for on Etsy. An estimate. It's a, like a ten or twenty bucks a month, and you could type in its keyword, for instance, Nebraska landscape or something like that. And when I did subscribe to this, you know, the number of people looking for Nebraska landscape was pretty small. Um, so if I wanted to change my shop up and reach more buyers, I think what I'll, what I'm going to be doing this year, what I want to do is be more conscious and more specific to what people are buying to put in their specific house. So like I said, a country home, a farmhouse, a modern farmhouse, and they want to put something in a bedroom, for instance, they might want a nice, beautiful, calm and serene country scene that makes them feel like at home and at ease and, and, and something that they want to go into their bedroom with, right? And so I think that in the future this year, the next six months of this year, my shop is going to be converted into something like that. So I'll have some Nebraska stuff in there. I'll keep that in there, um, but I'm going to expand and, and try to reach more people. I also want to expand and reach more people with extra large art. So I've seen that there's a little bit of a niche where people are looking for, they have a big room, they have a big space, they want something big to put on their wall. And I have some photos, some panoramas, some stitching, and some, some newer stuff that would go well with that, really, really big, um, and would look fantastic. So that's another area that I'm looking to expand to get more buyers and to get more people to come to my shop. So for you, take the time to start to look at that. You could also think about doing Etsy ads. You can do social media. You can create accounts for all that stuff and help drive stuff to Etsy, to your shop. Uh, you could also open up your own shop on your website. Just remember that you're going to have to do all the, the, the traffic directly there. And, 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 and that's a lot harder to do, which is why I stick mostly to, to Etsy. The last part I want to talk about is reviews. I think reviews are important. And I don't get as many reviews as I need to. And I actually reached out to a couple Etsy uh, people that have a lot of reviews. I just asked them, hey, how do you get so many reviews? And they were super kind. And they basically said that their packaging um, is really, really nice. They put nice packaging that's branded for them. And they also include inside like a coupon for a repeat buyer. And then they ask in that coupon, they ask specifically, hey, could you please review? I'm a small shop. I do this for my home. I print my own work. I would, it would help me to get a review from you if you find my stuff uh, great. And most of the people say that that's a big deal. Um, one of the photographers that um, sells a high dollar stuff said that they put in a free like five by five print with everything that's signed. So people get a more expensive print that they want to put on their wall or put in a frame or something like that. And then they get kind of like this cool little extra print, just a little something extra that didn't cost a photographer that much. And that makes a little bit of a difference. And he said that he thinks that that makes a, that made a big difference when he, once he started doing that to, to elicit reviews. So I hope this helps a little bit. I think this is just a getting starting point. That's all I wanted to make this video for. I could probably make a two hour video delving into everything I've learned off the last couple of years of Etsy. But I wanted to get you started. Hopefully you find a way to actually start to put some stuff in there and get out there and start selling your work. Do something with the images you have. Find the audience that appreciates your work and, and allow them the opportunity to make their home more beautiful or their office more beautiful with your stuff and make some money. So hopefully you can go buy new lenses, new equipment, and maybe even pay for gas, which is important right now. So get started. If you have questions, ask them below. And I'd love to be able to help you actually get out there, sell your work, and find more happiness with your photography.